Greetings everybody from my 2014 Mercedes-Benz GLK 250 Blue Tech 4 Matic. So, uh, wanted to give an update uh, on a few things. So, first of all, this trip will end up marking my first 500 miles with this car. And so far, so good. No issues whatsoever. Um, and uh, it seems like this thing's just going to go a long time, um, relatively trouble free. So, I also have an update on the maintenance history, which actually was kind of surprising to me. So, I, uh, to talk about how I got that, I actually got a, a name of the person who originally purchased the car, but turns out it was actually a company car, so it was in the name of the person's company, but that person was actually the CEO. So I reached out to the CEO, uh, he gave me an email saying that it was okay for the dealer to release the service history to me, and uh, they were able to use that email and send me a PDF showing well, I can't say all of the service history, but most of the service history. Um, I think Mercedes-Benz dealers switched computer systems um, in 2017 or something like that. And um, as a result, it only went back to about 35,000 miles. But from what I could see... Uh, it looks like it had pretty much zero issues for the first 90,000 miles or so, maybe even more, um, other than just regular maintenance, like brakes, tires, DEF, that sort of thing. So, I, I've done some research on the forums, and there's some some mixed reviews about reliability of these things, but uh, this seems like an incredibly reliable car, um, given uh, the history, at least what I was able to see from 35,000 miles on up. Pretty much it just went in every 10,000 miles for the service, and um, that was it no repairs or, or anything other than what I mentioned in my uh, other video uh, where I talked about all the stuff that's gone wrong with it. Uh, what is this person doing? If I can get around them. There we go. People just baffle me the way they drive on the highway. It's like, okay, let's go to over into the fast lane and then slow down to 65. Unless you're trying to pass me, then I'm going to floor it because we can't have that. And now the guy's tailgating me. If you're going to get in the passing lane, pass people. Anyway, back to the topic at hand. It's just me ranting a little bit about idiot drivers. Um... Wow, this truck is hauling ass here. I'm going like 85, and I don't think I'm even going to barely be able to pass him. Uh, so, yeah, back to the service history. So, I, I now pretty much have a mostly complete service history. I do notice that for some of the services, they um, actually wrote, stamped it in the book. So, I think the first couple services may be stamped in the book, even though I don't have a... I don't have a PDF printout of that. Um, I'm going to have to check that. I like to have a full service history of a car when I buy it. It's just uh, something that's really nice to me. And a lot of times you can find clues for how to get that. Dealerships are hit or miss on whether they'll actually be willing to provide that information to you. Um just depends on who you talk to. I actually talked to the manager of the dealer that did the service and he was a little leery but he talked to his boss and apparently got the green light to give that all to me. 
So, I did find out a few interesting things, though. Um, so, we're sitting at 144,806 right now. The uh, 70K service was done at 63,000, and that included uh, transmission oil change. Um, so, that was done once which actually so it's been about 80,000 miles give or take since that so um, it's technically due for another one uh, they call for every 70,000 miles it's good to know it was done at least once um, <clears throat> so I'm eventually gonna either do that or have that done I, I did that job on my uh, 2011 E350 um, and, which has the same exact transmission as this, the one with the blue fluid. Man, that job was a nightmare. If you if you are not completely prepared and completely aware of everything you need to do for that job, it can be a real bear, and especially if you don't have the right tools. If I ever do it again, I'm gonna make sure I have the fluid pump uh, reservoir thing. Uh, FCP Euro has one of those for a couple hundred bucks, so that's basically what it would cost in labor to have the job done anyway. So, it would pay for itself if I did it more than once. And chances are I'm going to be having other cars with the same transmission in it. So we'll see how I want to do that. Um, the other thing is the differential fluid and coolant has never been changed so I'm gonna take care of that as well um, I've heard stories though about uh, people who have never changed their differentials in a formatic Mercedes differential fluid and uh, have gotten 300,000 miles out of them without issue I just tend to want to do be a little bit more uh, maintenance intensive than most people are with their cars um, it does not call for a fluid change but um, ooh, we have a person walking out into the middle of the highway here that's real safe so yeah it does not call for it but I, I think that I definitely want to do all this stuff by at least 150,000 miles I'm getting a couple quotes. I got a quote from the dealer that serviced this car previously. One interesting thing they said is that the transmission drain and fill would take nine quarts. But I don't think that's actually right. I think if you just drain and fill it, you're looking at uh, four to five quarts, maybe six. I don't know exactly. Uh, so we'll see what we'll see what some other shops say. Um, it's nice to know there's no no real rush. I mean, it's something that should be done and is due. And uh, holy cow, like every couple miles, there's something in the right lane. So, yeah, that's where we are now. Uh, we, it will definitely be interesting to see how this thing does uh, over time. My plan as it stands now is to keep it. I should probably slow down a little bit too. I noticed that Ford in the left lane is slowing down. Love my left lane campers. They're just fantastic. Um, but yeah, I'm planning on taking this on a couple longer road trips uh, this month. And uh, continuing to rack up some miles. And it's funny, I've... Uh, not really been driving my other car since I got this. There's just something about this thing that is so engaging to drive. I, I can't explain it. It's just it's comfortable um, it, it, even with the emissions modification and all the miles it's still surprisingly powerful. You can see the Oda 60 video I did uh, a little bit earlier. I think it's going to need windshield wipers too. I'm going to keep uh, keep looking it over and seeing what all I'm going to need to do. Um, underneath, there's not a whole lot of rust. I mean, you can tell this was definitely a, a northern car, but uh, nothing, nothing serious. 
it brings to mind that uh, 2013 Lexus LX570 that I looked at that was actually rusted all the way through on some uh, frame components. Uh, I think I made a quick video about that. It was a car I was test driving and comp contemplating. In retrospect, I'm glad I didn't buy it because I would have never found this one. And uh, just absolutely adore this car. So anyway, that's now officially my first 500 miles. I don't know if that's focusing or not. And uh, go ahead and get off on this back road here. All right. Have a great day, everyone.